Well, if you own and use a Dremel like me, it's a pretty good chance you've got one of these too. They're okay for drilling in PVC. You might be able to use them to drill in brass, copper, or even aluminum, but much more than that, eh, forget about it. A couple of weeks ago, I sprung for one of these. First glance, I don't know if I had much faith in it, but I figured I'd try it anyway. I think ideally you want to really aim for the lower magnifications of these things, by the way, unless you're really trying to step up and do some microscope work on something you know is very small. Here's my basic unit, USB only with an LED dimmer. Also coming with the software on a mini CD and then the little calibration ruler. You're really going to want this. Don't buy one without it. And now onto the matting. All plastic. Real lightweight. Well, I guess if you can stack magazines, you might be able to get some use out of this original mount, but heh, really, I'm kind of laughing. Problem here is it forces you to do things backwards. You set the magnification and then adjust the height to match the magnification. Okay, time to do a little basic calibration. What I've done here is count the ridges from the right. In this case, I'm five in from the right. So, yes, I did the same thing. I counted ridges from the left side. On my microscope, fully counterclockwise is minimum magnification. Fully clockwise is maximum magnification. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of these to get some useful work out of it, this is about the minimum you want to consider if you're buying things, unlike me and making things. Because this is going to keep it nice and stable. It's all metal. It's not going to be real flimsy and moving around on you. And this will allow you to actually get some useful work out of this thing. Me, I'm going to go a little bit further on this. Okay, acknowledging the mount supplied with the microscope has just a few minor limitations. Let's see what other things need to add to my design to improve on these little deficiencies here. Okay, the number one item on my list of things to have with a digital microscope mounting is precision, stability, and repeatability. Second out of my list is to have the maximum possible adjustability in range of magnification. Next on my list, the microscope should be easily removable from the matting with no tools. I want to be able to safely store the digital microscope or switch to a different matting for a different application. Next on my list, normal usage of the microscope in the mounting won't damage the microscope. When I started looking into this, I started doing some basic research. Number one question was, okay, what is the outside diameter of it? In this case, it's 1.3 inches. And lo and behold, so is a one inch PVC coupling. And as you can see here, it fits nice and tight. It's snug enough where you got a little bit of movement, but it'll allow you to put the microscope in there and turn it upside down. It's not going to fall out. Now, this is exactly what I was looking for. Something with a little minor adjustment to it, but a real snug fit. And it's going to give me a good stable mount once I find a way to mount the PVC coupling, which is what the next part of this project is. Now, let's take another look at this drill press stand to see how it just might be able to solve this microscope mounting problem. Give you real good adjustability and make a pretty precision adjustment tool so you can use your microscope to look at just about anything. First thing here to take note of is it can be turned at any angle from 90 degrees straight down to horizontal. Obviously the purpose here is to hold the Dremel so you can have both hands on whatever you're working on. This just might be one of the features I'll explore a little later on in the video. This next view shows that uh, there's just one bolt that's really holding on the portion that holds the Dremel itself. The bolt up top is for a drill stop guide. This too has some interesting things to explore. I'm going to go ahead and take off that one mounting bolt and pull out the rack assembly there that holds the Dremel. The one thing to take note of is you need to put a big washer in the existing bolt back. This prevents the bore from retracting all the way and releasing the spring tension. If you do that, you've got to take the whole side of the unit apart to re-engage the spring tension. And you definitely want spring tension to retract the drill press handle. And you'll see why in a few moments. Here's the actual Dremel holder and the drill stop is removed from the drill press. And here's the actual Dremel holder is viewed from the bottom side looking up. 
And now here's what I'm going to make my microscope mount with. A one inch PVC coupling and a small piece of approximately inch and a half by a quarter inch thick PVC trim board. After a little cutting, trimming, and gluing, here's what I came up with. Note that the board is offset in the mounting to make it a little stronger and it also allows the PVC to line up in the previous center line where the Dremel tool was mounted. And now what was formerly the drill stop location is now the fine adjustment turning knob. And here's a couple quick shots of the microscope mounted in the bracket. Note that it is adjustable in the bracket. It's snug, but you can move it up and down slightly, but it'll stay there. And now if you remember the little microscope calibration ruler I was talking about, that was a freebie hopefully you got with your microscope. Here's where it's going to start coming in real handy. First thing I'm going to do is run the microscope all the way out to minimum magnification. And here's what that looks like on the computer screen. Next, I'm going to run it into a good medium magnification. This is, this is a magnification of probably about 100 to 200. Note that the image on the computer is very clear and very sharp, indicating my focus is very, very tight. Next, I'm going to move my scope mounting up to maximum magnification for the unit. In this case, mine should go to 800 according to the manufacturer. As you can see here, the image on the computer is still clear and very sharp, indicating again a good, solid, clean focus here. This means that, of course, this bracket allows you to go all the way from minimum magnification to maximum magnification and still have a good, tight focus. You'll also note that I had to take a little clear plastic extension piece off. There's simply no way you can get close enough to focus with this piece in place when you start getting the magnification back up. Here's a couple of shots looking at the microscope already in the mount as looking from the bottom side up, both with and without the LEDs on. Note that in this case, a little plastic housing extension has been removed. And now the same two shots with the housing back in place. And of course, with the LEDs off and the LEDs on. Here's a couple of shots of how tight the mounting gets to the actual working surface, both with and without the LEDs. Note that it is very, very tight on the bottom, and usually you have to pull the plastic off for all the upper magnifications. And now a word or two concerning magnification. Item number one is you got to decide what you're going to look at it on, and consider that your maximum magnification. If you're looking at a 40-inch or 55-inch monitor, you're going to get one magnification. If you're looking at a real small iPhone screen, you're going to get another magnification. So once you decide on your standard, the next step is to go ahead and start making those turns and measuring the magnification and then writing down how many ridges in you get a certain magnification at. Here I've measured a magnification for every single one of the little ridges I've turned out from the minimum side. Now I've got a magnification table versus the actual location of the microscope as you turn it out. Now let's look at a few operational details I really like about this design. First off, it's a friction adjustable up and down the polished post so you can move it anywhere you want to. And as you see here, you can rotate it in 90 degrees or 180 as I have in this case. In addition, you can use the drill press lever as a focusing range checker to make sure that you're in the range of your adjustments. What I like here is to be able to work off the actual working surface rather than off the base. This, of course, means you can put your work and your hands directly on the working surface without any elevation. Here's what that looks like in practice, where I've got an actual electronic board sitting on the actual working surface, and you can see on the computer the one diode that I'm focusing on. That makes checking a board so much easier because you can basically move the board as you want to and look at it in a 3D mode going up and down to check things as far as solders and components to make sure everything looks okay. As I hinted to earlier, you can also use the microscope at a different angle other than directly down. Here I've turned it 90 degrees and I'm looking at a plant leaf at medium magnification. Here's another shot taking that same printed circuit board and turning it 90 degrees. That allows me to do my inspection perpendicular to the normal working axis. Okay, so what are the design limitations of this design? Number one, you're still pretty much restricted to what you can bring to the microscope. Since it's got to be within easy distance of the microscope, you can't put anything big underneath it. Now, what I do like about this mount, it definitely is nice and precise, stable, and repeatable. It's everything I could hope for there. 
Number two, it allows you to have a good sharp focus throughout the entire range of the microscope. You can go all the way from minimum magnification to maximum magnification. Well, that about wraps this one up. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a like. You definitely want to consider subscribing. I've got several videos on the way I'm sure you're going to see. Until I pass, cross again. Take care now. We'll catch you on the next video.